Hi, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to look at the Tech TDS 2024 as it compares to the MDO 3104 in connecting to a computer. This is going to be for both data logging and for user interface. So uh, it's kind of boring to plug them in, it's just connecting a USB plug or an Ethernet cable, so uh, I'm going to skip right to what it does on the computer. Okay, so I've got my Tech 2024B all powered up and booted, and then I'm going to plug it in with the USB cable. What should happen is it should recognize immediately as a instrument, which it did. Let's make sure. Let's go to Manage and uh, check the Device Manager. Sure enough, here it is. Uh, sometimes it would come up as a portable device, as a as a printer, like a PXI device or something. That's bad. You want to uninstall it and then unplug and replug in. Um, but here we go. Listed TDS 2024B, awesome. And we can click Get Screen. And it takes quite a while for the 2024 to communicate over USB, much longer than the MDO takes. But still, it gets the job done. That's a scope shot. I can also select channels and get the waveform. This will take a while too because USB is slow with this series. Uh, there's also uh, send and get settings from the scope and then some preferences. Really, it's very lightweight program to get you just the most minimal stuff from your scope. Uh, very straightforward, but very limited functionality. Next up, I'm going to do the same thing with my 3104. You should note that the 3104 and the 2024, most of the scopes use the same drivers and the same program. So I'm plugging it in, instantly picked it up. Um, here it is in my device manager right down here and it's recognized as the MDO 3104. That was much faster than the 2024B was. Getting the screen also much faster than 2024. Nothing too special. Getting data, same deal, except for faster. You can see that the limitations here are driven by not the scope, but the desktop application. If you want to use a uh, USB connection to your scope, you'll probably be best suited by writing your own custom program that sends the commands directly to the scope to really give you full operation as opposed to this, which is uh, get screen, get waveform, save and load settings. Really not much here to, uh, to go on. The 3104 also offers Ethernet connection, which can serve up its own web page. But the way to get that started is, you know, you're going to plug into your router with an Ethernet cable, and you're going to go to this I/O utility page, and you're going to look at the Ethernet settings. And these settings come up with a IP address, which you can type right into your browser. Now, you, if you wanted to have somebody remotely operating this scope from far away, you'd have to do like port forwarding and other kind of weird stuff. But uh, for this case, we'll assume that you're just going to be local on your own network. So let's see what happens when we go to this web page uh, that's set up here based on this IP address. Let's type in the IP address, which I can read right off the oscilloscope screen. And look at that. It pops right up to everything that's running. Now, it just tells you a little bit about the instrument. What's interesting is you can control the entire scope by entering the LXI user and then I change the password on the scope. You can do that right on the front panel. Uh, but LXI user is the default username to log in. And here we are. Uh, this is the same screen that we just left off on with the video camera. And I can hit menu off and menu off. And I'm sitting here controlling all of these, uh, all these aspects, I suppose, right here that's also being done on the scope. So I can change the scale. If I want to change vertical scale to 5 volts per division, it just changed that here. Or I can click around, I can go to the horizontal submenu, and then I can change the scale uh, looking at different horizontal scales. All the functions that are available, including trigger function, measurement functions, uh, you can turn on the function generator, everything is available to you on this web page that would be available to both you on the front panel. It's kind of a pain in the neck with these little buttons and using a mouse. Maybe a touch screen, or like a giant touch screen would be cool here. That's it. Uh, as far as the USB connectivity goes, uh, it's real bare bones. It's similar to the old GPIV system. Uh, you're limited to whatever your software is on your computer, but it can send all the commands that are capable of being operated on with the scope. Um, the MDO didn't do any better or worse than the, than the 2024. 
in this case. Uh, it did, however, benefit from the Ethernet connection and the remote access. I'm sure if somebody was on a team that is remote and they wanted to be able to share a scope or share a set of hardware, that'll be helpful. Or even if somebody is sharing the lab and has a private workspace, they may want to work from their workspace where it's quiet and be able to still control the system in the lab or at least keep an eye on it. Keep an eye out for my future reviews or my future tutorials and I hope you get a chance to play with some of this scope tech yourself.